This is MJ. I'm an author. I'm an artist. I'm an analyzer. Welcome to Red Panda Report, Season 2, Episode 20, covering Red Panda Adventures 20, Monkey Shines. Here is the copy written by Greg Taylor. Sometimes crime is so easy to spot. The thug in the alleyway. The mugger on the street. And other times, the strangest little things can turn out to be the most sinister. Say, 500 pounds of bananas that vanish into thin air. Or a load of plastic coconuts. Crimes on a theme? A new menace taking shape? Or is it a simple case of monkey shines? This episode of Red Panda Adventures originally aired April 7, 2007, written and directed by Greg Taylor, again, the writer of the copy. And I have some notes on this. And I gotta say, this episode was a blast. Mad Monkey is a recurring villain for the Red Panda. At the end of the episode, he gets away, and he definitely comes back, and... He makes quite the statement. Um, he makes quite the statement. He's quite the character, and he's a lot of fun. Definitely one of my favorite characters in the show. And he only shows up a handful of times, really, but it's enough. And every time he does, it's quite impactful. So that's fun. Um, I liked the way that the mystery was set up. I liked the way that we had just little bits... <laughs> Uh, just little bits. I I love the repetition of and the absurd concept of 500 pounds of bananas playing such a, a big uh, factor in this. And uh, I really found it delightful. And anyway, uh, it the zaniness of that being a major clue and being one of the first things in this episode that makes it remarkable definitely matches with who Mad Monkey is, Anton Cresswell, and how he chooses to operate. Um, so that was interesting. Uh, I really like, and I'm surprised by the fact that, uh, well, I always wanted to get a good look at him and I never ended up buying the comics, but there are, uh, I have the first, uh, graphic novel, uh, which features the stranger, the mysterious stranger. I can't remember. I think he's just called the stranger. Anyway, um, featuring the stranger who is a master of, uh, of mysticism. And he was one of the people who trained Red Panda or helped him out. And he gets pulled into the story a lot. Um, Maxwell Falcone is his name. He's a stage magician, uh, but that covers up the fact that he's an actual magic user. Anyway, that's a tangent. Uh, we get depictions of him uh, and Red Panda and Flying Squirrel in their full costumes and everything uh, in those, uh, in that, uh, in that comic book. Uh, and then there are other comic books um, put out by IDW, I think, and Monkey Brain Comics. Um, anyway, uh, so Taylor wrote those, and uh, I believe the guy who illustrated them was Kuntz. I think he did all of them. K-O-O-N-T-Z, I believe. Anyway, uh, I always wanted to see the depiction of Mad Monkey, and I never got around to getting those uh, from the comic shop or buying directly from the uh, the website uh, um, to get a good look at him. But yeah, it's he's got an interesting look because his face is painted to look like a mandrel, I believe. Um, and he's wearing a domino mask, it sounds like to me, based on the description in the book. And I find that or in the episode. So I think that's interesting. Uh, I'd love to get a full look. Like, is he wearing a suit and then he's got the, the faint, painted face in the mask or is he in like some sort of strange monkey suit? It's a little unclear, but uh, either way, he's got the attitude and he's got the, the, the drama and the, uh, I don't know, the energy to pull off either look basically is what I'm thinking. And uh, I could definitely buy it either way. Um, anyway, so that's kind of interesting. I know it's, it's an audio drama, so you don't get that visual, but I'm definitely curious about the visual because it just seems like it would be really compelling to see. Um, I like the, the drop of the reference to Tarzan and the Jungle Book being real things that happened in the history of the world of Red Panda. Uh, I think five years ago. So Cresswell, the, the story goes that he was with the monkeys for six years and he had this connection with them. He, five years ago, while Red Panda was still in the Orient training, he, Cresswell, was at the Club Macaw and other places talking about his story, and it's taking him this time, uh, like the five intervening years, to dream up or cook up the Mad Monkey persona and go ahead and go with this as a thing. But still, that means that uh, somewhere around there, Tarzan of the Apes and uh, Mowgli, I guess, are running around doing something or other, um, and that's kind of a fun thing. I don't think that's serious, but it's, you know, canon, so to speak. And, uh, that's just a lot of fun to think that that's, that's true in the world of the Red Panda. And let me see. Oh, so this episode was very funny. Um, 
There was a lot of humor in it. There was a lot of uh, Kit reacting badly to Mad Monkey and a lot of Mad Monkey just like being absurd. He's it's absurdist humor because he's so ridiculous, uh, but he is dangerous. Um, there's some great, some great like surprises and lines, uh, or some great surprises and and like turnarounds uh, that are reveals I should say that are woven into the the story and it's interesting because we can't see the monkeys uh we're all it's all audio we're all having it described to us and you know uh kit and red panda are not concerned about fighting the monkeys really because they're just monkeys right and uh chris will kind of mocks him he says yes cute harmless you know little monkeys uh with razor sharp claws and teeth and Kit's like, yeah, we'll be fine. And then he said, did I mention they have guns? And just like that delivery is so fantastic. And it's so ridiculous to think that like they were all armed with weapons and somehow those were hidden. Like, are they wearing little monkey vests that they have the guns in? Do they have them on backpacks or in satchels? Or like, well, what's what's going on with these monkeys that they're able to conceal these weapons uh, and then bring them out dramatically? Of course, he's controlling them. So he coordinates them and, and has them bring the weapons out or whatever. But uh, it's just, it's kind of, it's it's a lot of fun and it's ridiculous and crazy. And I really enjoy it. So, yeah, Mad Monkey is definitely one of my favorite characters. Uh, I really love the the like little little bit of lore that because of whatever happened to him when his plane crash landed, I think is what happened. Um, he somehow gained an innate psychic ability to link not with humans, but instead with these. I I don't know if it's it's some specific form of of monkey or ape or whatever, and. The baboons are what seem to be affected, and I think because it's old timey, like they don't really make the difference. They don't really mark the difference. Like, um, like a monkey has a tail, almost always. Uh, gorillas and chimpanzees don't really have tails. They've got you know the little stubby tail thing, uh, like how humans have uh, a tail bone, but we don't have, have actual tails that you know wag. Um, so like that's a key difference between monkeys and apes. Uh, I don't know what the other differences are between monkeys and apes, and I wasn't aware i guess that baboons were in the monkey family and it seems like mad monkey can despite the fact that he calls himself mad monkey can only control baboons um or at least that's what i think is the statement or is what's true but anyway what's cool about that is that he has this ability to or rather a resistance to hypnosis from other people because he's got like a natural hypnosis that or a yeah, it's an innate, I'll say it that way. He has an innate hypnosis ability that works between him and these particular um, types of, mm, I guess, monkeys. Baboons must be like a subspecies of monkeys. Anyway, so uh, not apes, distinct from gorillas and chimpanzees. Anyway, so uh, that's really interesting. And I, I, first of all, that's interesting that that could happen in the world of the Red Panda. Second of all, it's great that it gives him immunity to Red Panda's hypnosis and we get to hear that he tried for years to have other hypnotists remove the link and they were unable to. And that really makes him an interesting foe. Like his absurdity and his like willingness to, well, also the fact that he thought this was a, a caper, that this was a scam, a flim flam that Red Panda was doing in the town and he was making money off of it is really fun and interesting. That kind of reminds me of how Peter Parker in like, I think the actual Amazing Fantasy, no, no, Spectacular, Spectacular Spider-Man. He debuted in Amazing Fantasy 15, and then he was in Amazing Spider-Man 1 uh, a month or two later. Uh, he goes to the Fantastic Four, and he's like, hey, guys, I want a job because I'm poor and I need money. And they're like, we don't do this for money. Any, any money we get or recover, we donate and whatever. And we have a fund that we, like a grant that we use to afford everything we need to do. And he's like, oh, that stinks. You guys are no good. And he gets out of there. So it's kind of funny that, um, and I'm not saying that uh, Taylor, Greg Taylor was thinking about that when he made this story, but it is fun that uh, Mad Monkey did want to enrich himself. He wanted to get it on the scam. And when he couldn't, uh, I really like that thing where at the, at the end where he says, if you can be good for good's sake, then I'll be evil for evil's sake. And then he runs off and promises to be Red Panda's nemesis and uh, in Ernest's time. And I don't know, that's, it's really interesting. I think it's a great setup for a villain. I love that fact that Red, um, that Red Panda and Flying Squirrel didn't get him, that they let him get away on purpose because he had made this threat of all these bombs in the building that were going to uh, destroy whatever the building was. It, it was it was a lot, and they didn't want to allow that destruction to happen. It was more important for them to protect that place and that property than it was for them to, to seize Mad Monkey at that time. And I think that's interesting. It works. It definitely feels in, very much in line with the times and, and with you know heroic actions. And I don't know if there were people in there who were going to get hurt too or not. But uh, anyway, 
good stuff. I really liked it. It was a lot of fun. And uh, I'd love to know what you thought about this. Uh, and uh, yeah, share your comments with me. Share your thoughts on it. I'd be curious to hear, like I said. Until next time, folks, take care, be well, and stay away from monkeys. I hope you enjoyed that. Subscribe to keep up with me. Like and share to help me reach more people like you. And go to mjmunoz.com to find your next favorite thing. And don't forget to let your voice be heard. Stories are always better when you're part of the conversation. Until next time, be well. This is MJ, signing out. This has been a Story Over Everything production.